this, 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 and this are the third batch from last year. And what happened was I used an amount of the first batch from the year with active yeast as a starter to see if that would kickstart the wine. And there was fermentation. Uh, it looks and smells like wine, but it tastes like grape juice. There's no alcohol. It's all sugar. So it's possible that it was over-sugared and that, that uh, caused the, uh, the fermentation to kind of plug up on itself. So what I'm going to do is siphon this wine because there is a whole bunch of silt in the bottom. And it's unfortunately really hard to show you. You'll probably see it right. Right there. This is a little layer of silt in all of these. These have been, literally for the last 12 months, have been in my cupboard with gently loose tops on them. I uh, had one of these Gallo 1.75 liter bottles uh, get uh, invaded by a fruit fly or something. It's larva was in there, so that ended up becoming a part of a fly trap. And I had a bit that I was going to attempt to back sweeten or do something with in one of those Templeton rye bottles, and that also failed. It got bugs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this little, little tube in, and I'm just going to kind of suck it out until it gets to the end, and I'm going to let it siphon into a bucket that's kind of at a lower level here. And I'm going to do this with the light on it so that I can try and keep it above the silt level and keep the silt separate. There it goes. And you're going to watch with me. siphoning you can see the silts that I hope to avoid it smells very whiny if it does have alcohol in it uh, I'm just gonna let it sit and ferment with a bubbler like the other kind I guess this is gonna take a while so I'll just time-lapse it so we've got that one down these two down gonna move to the next one A little bit of silt. We're gonna pour them all together, let them settle. Do this one next. It's pretty dark. It's actually a little bit alcoholic. <laughs> Definitely attracted some fruit flies, so in order to keep them from getting in, I'm using a little paper towel stopper to allow the hose to get through. I'm trying to keep it adjusted so we don't disturb the silt too much. where we're at. Last one. All right, 
so this is drained down. Going to uh, put the rest of the silt where it belongs uh, together, the next phase of that, and then I will show you what it looks like in the bucket. Okay, first this is the bottoms of everything poured together. It's very silty. It's effectively opaque at this time. There's a little light coming through, but not really. It's mostly reflect reflections. So, let's take a look in here. A little bit less than I thought, but it is about two and a half to three gallons. It's going to need filtered because there's a few cat danders in it. And uh, once it's filtered into a new bucket, I think it's going to be able to sit for a little while. Okay, so the siphon's in the bucket that I first went into. It's all the way to the bottom. T top is on to keep flies out. Papers are on to keep flies out of here. And we're going through a coffee filter. All right, this is the conclusion to the second winemaking video. I'm going to have to go back after recording this and edit everything together. Um, so right now it's sitting in the closet next to the new batch and there's about two and a half, three gallons. And uh, everything went through the coffee filter uh, down to the very bottom, poured the last little bit through, put the lid right on, didn't take pictures, didn't do nothing. We're gonna keep that one pure. Uh, it has its own separate bubbler. Each one has a hose coming out the top of a bucket. It's been taped over to keep it airtight. And the little plastic hose fish tank airline terminates in water. So what will happen is you'll have this little hose and this little boop, boop, boop will start coming out of it with fermentation. That's how you can gauge how it's working. So the, uh, the new batch I will be stirring at least once a day for the next three or four days, make sure that it gets going good, ferment it until it stops bubbling. And after that, uh, straining and I don't know, I might let it sit and age for a year like this one. But, uh, the second batch, the one that I, or last year's third batch, I should say, um, in the process of siphoning, uh, it was aerated. Uh, the yeast are still active. I took a little sip off the line while I was siphoning and, uh, it's active yeast. Um, a little bit of booze to it, a little bit of booze to it. So, uh, from that little, little bits of sippage and maybe the active yeast fermenting any sugars or starches in my mouth. Um, I had a nice little buzz there for a second off very, very little of this wine and it tasted phenomenal. So I'm actually kind of excited. I thought this was going to be a failed experiment that I was going to do another experiment to see if I could unfail. And it turned out it was not a failure to begin with. So I'm continuing last year's trend of accidentally making wine that is better than the stuff that people paid three figures for per bottle. Um, I also checked on last year's uh, grape wine vinegar. It appears to be ready. So I may divvy some of that up, and I'm certainly, uh, there was a tasting history with Max Miller video where he did uh, traditional Halloween candy that included uh, vinegar candies and taffies. So uh, I may decide to attempt to make some uh, grape wine vinegar taffy, which will have then a grape flavor to it uh, at some point because of that. Uh, as far as the wine goes, uh, I'm going to give it a couple of days to see how it bubbles. And uh, after that, I think I'm just going to make sure that I've got some properly sanitized and sterilized bottles. I'm going to bottle it and pasteurize it and keep some of it and distribute other of it. Because why not? And uh, I think with the new batch that I did tonight from the ones I just picked, I'm liable to get about a gallon of that wine. And that, I don't know, I may... I may give some people some sips. I may keep it for myself. I don't know. So uh, that's what I got. Uh, now it's time to do a whole bunch of editing. Thank you for watching.